Welcome to Colonel Football Weekly, as we take an inside look at Nickel State University football. Today's program is presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, the official sports medicine provider of Nichols Athletics. Colonel Football Weekly is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. And People's Health, your Medicare health team. Hello and welcome to Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. I'm Mike Wagonheim, alongside the interim head coach of the Colonel Football Program, Steve Axman. Coach, it was good to be back home this past weekend. Couldn't pick up, uh, couldn't pick up a W, but the team came out inspired, came out fired up, and it looks like uh, they're off to a more uh, a positive flow right now than uh, in the previous few weeks. Well, I think there's no doubt about that. We were very anxious to get home. Uh, having been on the road uh, five of uh, six games, and especially against the schedule we were playing, and you know to get home, get play, get home, play, uh, get a chance to play in front of your home folks, that's uh, awfully important. I think the kids were really excited, and and uh, they played uh, they played hard, they played excitedly, and and uh, didn't get to win. Oh, that's that's the negative of the whole situation. But probably the best three quarters of football the Colonels have put together so far just ran out of gas in the end. What positives do you take away from the matchup with uh, Stephen F. Austin, which the Colonels would ultimately uh, fall in 42-20? to 20? Well, first of all, we were playing against a very good football team. I, I thought they were very stout. Uh, I thought they were very good. I thought they were good all the way across the board. They really didn't show any weaknesses uh, offensively, defensively in a kicking game. So we knew we were going to be playing against someone that was very formidable. So for us, uh, in many respects, to improve and improve, I, I thought dr dramatically improve in this game, take take some big jumps. Um, you know, I thought I was really pleased with um, some of the things done by our defense, from our offense, from the kicking game. So um, there was a lot of positives to take out of it. Uh, bottom line, though, is uh, we really need to get a win, and we need to get one soon. So what's going to be the difference between this this past weekend and, and the coming weekends, and getting over that hump and getting that W? Well, basically, I think we've got to take another jump like we did last week. If we can do that, then I think we can put ourselves in a situation where we can compete for four quarters and come away with a win. The good news is what you found is these kids are, are still ready to go. They're ready to go for another five, six weeks here. They want to play. They want to get a W, and they have not uh, given up on this season. I, there's no doubt about that. I think the great attribute of this team, of, of these players, are uh, these kids have a lot of fortitude. They they want to win so badly. They work hard to do it. Uh, they have not given up. Uh, they're anxious for the next chance to win. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud to, to be their uh, head coach for this short period of time. Uh, they're just a great group of kids really wanting to get the job done. Colonels will host Lamar this Saturday. Before we talk about the Cardinals, let's look back at this past weekend. The game here in Thibodeau delayed 50 minutes at the start due to storms in and around the area. That meant some extra time in the locker room. The players have a rule back there. If you step on the end in the middle of the locker room, there's a punishment. For Coach Axman, 10 push-ups were in order. Coach Ax keeping the team loose during all of that downtime before the ball came as the uh, team uh, appreciative of uh, his efforts in the locker room. SFA played loose at the start. They opened the game with a clinical eight-play, 72-yard drive. One of the nation's premier running backs, Gus Johnson, manages to slip through several defenders on his way to pay dirt. The ground wasn't the only thing that was slippery after all that rain. Johnson leading the FCS with his 11th rushing touchdown of the year. That score also gave him 40 career TDs. He is now SFA's all-time leader in that category. Both defenses held the line for the remainder of the first quarter. Here on fourth and five from the Nichols 40, Byron Cobb bats away the pass from Zach Conk to DJ Ward. The Colonels take over on downs, though they'd have to punt it away again at the end of the quarter after being hurt by a penalty. Early second quarter, Johnson takes the handoff and he dashes for 23 yards into Nichols territory. The ball, though, at the end of this play comes out, and Cole Fraser is there to fall on it for the Colonels. The officials ruled it a fumble and a Nichols recovery, but they went back and reviewed it, overturning the call and keeping the ball with SFA. That had the possibility of deflating the Colonels, but they would step up again just a few plays later. SFA with a third and goal from the six. Conk is looking for six points, but Josh Dewey picks him off. Third career interception for the senior out of St. Rose. Remember, going back to last year, he had that pick in the end zone to seal the win at Western Michigan. So the Colonels respond defensively. Now, 
can they capitalize? They would have to start a drive from their own four-yard line. First and 10, Tobias Lofton gets the call, and he takes a few jacks along with him. A 22-yard gain that matches his longest run of the year. Michael Henry and Lofton, a formidable duo for the Colonels at running back in this one. A penalty sets up first and 15 at the Jacks' 30. Kalen Henderson on the rollout, finding Xavier Marcus for 13 yards. Henderson went 12 for 28, threw for 123 yards. That was Xavier Marcus's lone catch of the night. What a drive this turned out to be. SFA stopping Henry twice on goal to go, but on the third time, he motors in from the one. First score of the year for Michael Henry. He's been outstanding in Southland play so far. And going into the locker room at halftime, Nichols and Stephen F. Austin are tied at seven. Brilliant first half of football, especially from the defense after that initial drive by SFA. Oh, no doubt about it. Our defense came up big, uh, and, and I was so glad to see that. But, you know, here they could have been up 14 nothing on us. And, uh, but instead, we get the pick get the stop, and I'm just really proud of the defense, really glad for them. They've worked very, very hard, and it's, it's nice to see them to be able to stand up and you know, take on such a formidable foe and, and uh, make things happen in a positive way. And the defense uh, feeding the offense there. Well, the defense gets a pick. The offense starts from their own four, mm -hmm. all the way backed up. That's the, the best play, the dry, uh, best drive the Colonels have put together so far this season. And to keep giving Henry that shot at the end zone and to have it pay off, uh, it was just a great sequence of events. Yeah, it really was. I, I was really excited to see that. You know, here we are. Well, uh, the good news is we, you know, got the interception. The bad news is we're 96 yards away. But that was a great drive. And that, that was a drive that I, re I really feel that it showed our players, you know, how good they can be. Uh, got two excellent runners in, in Henry and Loftus and, and Lofton. And uh, just uh, really exciting to see that drive and, and to punch it in. And, you know, and, and the neat thing was, uh, you know, on, on third and short, I'm kind of, it's time out, and I'm looking at the play call sheet, and I just utter out, uh, you know, should we try to power pass? And it was our quarterback who jumps in and says, no, we can pound this in, coach. Let's go get it. So I was really happy to see that, uh, um, you know, that, that Kalen felt that way and, and, and displayed that type of leadership. That, that really excited me. What was the message to the team at halftime? Hey, we can play with these guys. Let's just keep going, you know. And, uh, uh, and the team felt that, and they really believed that. And, you know, even though it got, the, it got tough for a while, we kept hanging in there. And, uh, um, you know, and I was proud of the way they competed all the way to the end. You know, we're, we're uh, driving the ball um, at the end of the game and looking to punch another, to get, try to get another touchdown. And, I was glad to see that. A lot of teams, uh, you know, kind of pack, in, pack it in long before that, and, and our guys didn't do that at all, and, and that's one of the things I'm most proud of them, uh, their ability to just hang in there and keep on trying. A lot of games for the Colonels this year were over by halftime. The Red and Gray came out fired up for the second half, knowing they had a shot. It was time to ax the Jacks after SFA had taken the previous six meetings head-to-head, -head, a chance for the Colonels to end several streaks over the next 30 minutes at John L. Guidry Stadium. But they'd start the third quarter with a three and out, and SFA replies almost immediately. Gus Johnson winds up slipping away again, a 34-yard touchdown run. Johnson nets 202 yards on 19 carries. This score gives the lead back to Stephen F. Austin, 14-7. This game was just full of big plays on both sides. Like this one coming up here. Next drive for Nichols, second and 11 from the 34. The handoff to Tobias Lofton gets to the edge, makes a slight cutback. He finds a seam and he's gone. No chance to catch Tobias. 66 yards, longest run for a Colonel this year. On the night, 104 yards on just seven rushes for Lofton. The PAT was blocked, though. Colonel's down one, 10 minutes left in the third. First play on the Jacks next drive. It's Johnson staying on his feet again. He picks up 48 yards before the Colonels can bring him down. Six plays later, Conk ran it in from the one to make it 21 to 13. Then a real punch in the gut here. The ensuing kickoff, Keenan Canty is stripped of the ball by Chance Barney, who plops on it to give SFA great field position here. And they would get a big conversion on third and four coming up from the 19-yard line as Conk would find his rarely used tight end, Will Taylor, coming up on this play here. A diving catch just shy of the goal line. Ten different SFA players caught a pass. Conk threw for 291 yards and ran for another 51 on the next play. Gus Johnson scored to make it 28-13 to with five minutes to go in the third. This one was slipping away. Nichols needed a big play, and they got it. 
They got two of them, in fact. A big return by Canty on the kickoff, and then Michael Henry gone 41 yards here. Henry and Tobias Lofton combined for 240 yards and three scores on the ground, and we've got a one-possession game heading in to the fourth quarter. You can see Henry and the entire team just raring to go. SFA looking to snuff out the rally, second and 10 at their own 35. Conk airs it out for Aaron Thomas, who makes a lunging grab. It's good for 35 yards, one of three receptions for Thomas. This is a 12-play, 81-yard drive that eats up almost five minutes. They cap it with a bootleg by Conk from the one. The Colonels find themselves down 15 now with 10 minutes to play. They'd go three and out on their next drive before forcing a lumberjack turnover on downs in the process. Nichols registers its first quarterback sack of the year as Ronnie Walker trips up Conk. He got ruled down before he got rid of the football. Nichols trying to chip away fourth and ten from midfield. Henderson looking downfield. Nothing available. So Kalen takes off, picks up 12 yards, keeping the drive alive. Time, though, very much a factor at this point. Another fourth and ten. This one from the SFA 38. The pass to DeMond Bolt but he is dropped for a loss. For all intents and purposes, that would do it. SFA would add a score in the final minute for good measure as a Conk keeps it for the 12-yard TD. He takes a pop at the goal line for his troubles here on the uh, final play. 42 to 20 is your final score in this one. SFA hanging on for the victory, but again, coach, a very inspired effort for the Colonels. You can see these guys still very much willing to compete. They want a W as much as anybody right now. No doubt about that. Let's see if we can get it this weekend. Um, the Colonels taking on the Cardinals. What's been the preparation so far for this one against Lamar? Well, so far we've uh, we ducked another uh, thunder and lightning storm yesterday. We got our practice in and uh, <laughs> we had to shorten it a little bit. Got some lightning bolts coming down real quick. So, uh, but we, you know, we had our, our normal Monday practice and and. Uh, Kind of loosened up and ran and got the stiffness out of our bodies and introduced a few new ideas and we were able to get uh, done what we needed to get done. I know you're shorthanded on the offensive line right now. You've had a number of guys go down. The seven that are left at this point trying to hold their own did a great job in a rush blocking, a little bit to be desired in pass blocking, but those guys are, are trying the hardest right now. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. That's, you know, one of uh, my greatest concerns. Uh, you, you need some depth, and you most where you need your depth most is in the offense and defensive line. So right about now we're a little thin, but we may have some folks coming back in the next couple of days, which would help us. Very good. We're going to talk about the Lamar game in full detail when we come back. we got to take a quick time out here on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center at Thibodeau Regional, back after this. In sports, you strive for first or best. The Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional is both. The region's first comprehensive sports medicine program with a team of the best sports medicine trained experts. You're serious about the game. We're serious about your safety. With advanced concussion testing technology and certified athletic trainers, we're keeping athletes safely in the game. Play hard. Play to win. The Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional will help you play it safe. Donnie, I'm in Rouse's at least three times a week, and I want the best prices every day. Come on, Chef. Let's go shopping. All right. There's got to be at least a 1,000 items just on this one aisle. At Rouse's, we stock more groceries than anyone else. I can see that. So what's with the tag? Best price every day. It's the Rouse's guarantee. You're getting our lowest price every day. So when I see this tag, you know you don't have to wait for a sale. I can shop any day. And get our best price every day. Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. Well, we're all about the people that we care for. At People's Health, we know that when it comes to health, what works is teamwork. Each People's Health plan member has a team of talented professionals working together to coordinate care so our members can do what they love to do. That's what we do. We're here for you. We're People's Health. People's Health, your Medicare health team. Back here with you on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. The Colonels concluding a brief 
two-game homestand this Saturday as Nichols plays host to Lamar. We're alongside the interim head coach of the Colonels, Steve Axman. Uh, again, a, a week where you don't have to travel, you don't have to worry about any of that. You get to focus in on the opponent, Lamar. It put together a decent year so far, and it's a program that's uh, still on its uh, way building after a long hiatus uh, without a program there. What have you made of the Cardinals so far watching them on film? Well, I think they've done a good job of, of you know, getting this uh, program together and, and, and going forward, especially in light of how many young players they have. They have a lot of young players that they're playing right now, and yet they're playing very well. They're, they're, um, you can see that they're well coached. They don't make a lot of big mistakes. And, uh, and play hard, play very hard. So, uh, you know, I think they're on the right track. You know, you look at them now and they're a little above 500 um, with their record and, uh, you know, but have a lot of nice young players. And, and like I said, I, I, you know, I think you see, you're going to see good things out of Lamar in the, in the near future. Lamar sing at 4-3 and three overall, 1-2 and two in the Southland. They own wins over Grambling, Texas College, Mississippi College, and Abilene Christian. They've lost to Texas A&M, Sam Houston, and Southeastern. Their quarterback, Caleb Berry, throws for almost 270 yards a game with 15 touchdowns and five picks. Defensive back Xavier Bethany leads a charge with 37 tackles, three and a half for lost yardage, along with a pair of picks, a few breakups, and two forced fumbles. That's a team that was in it with Southeastern this past week. The Lions ran away with it at the end as uh, some of those, again, a shorthandedness uh, kind of uh, mm -hmm. got exposed. But again, Lamar uh, can hang with the best of them in this league. Extremely formidable team they you know they play well and they play well as a as a team offensively defensively and with the kicking game where do you think it can best them I think we have to play a total game and we have to we've got to try to best them uh, in all three phases of the game it's going to be very important I think the team that comes closest to having uh, the dominance with uh, all three phases of the uh, game is obviously going to come out the winner but that's going to be very important in this game yeah, he had a season-high yardage uh, this past weekend, had a season-high in points. The defense, meanwhile, they were in position to make plays, just couldn't wrap up and tackle. But they were there waiting for the, uh, the running back, the wide receiver, whoever it was. If you guys can get that down, you should feel pretty confident about your chances. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I, I think the, the pure, it comes down to blocking and tackling. And, and right now, our tackling, we just need to improve there and do a better job, as you said, of wrapping up cons more consistently. And uh, once we do that, I think we'll take a big jump again uh, defensively. All right, we got you covered this Saturday. Nichols wrapping up their homestand, taking on Lamar. Start the day on the Colonel Sports Radio Network, presented by your local Super Chevy dealers with a Colonel pregame pass on KNSU 91.5 FM. That begins at 12.30. Then at 1.30, it's Colonel Weekly on Fox Sports Radio, KJIN AM 1490 in Homa. They'll also carry the game live at 2.30. It's the Colonel Countdown throughout our network of stations, including our flagship ESPN Radio New Orleans 100.3 FM. Kickoff is slated for three. You can watch it live online on Colonels All Access through our website, GoColonels.com. A half hour after the game, tune in again to KNSU for extended post-game coverage on the Colonel Roundup. Well, while you can always tune in to catch the game, nothing beats actually being here. And the kickoff, or the action rather, doesn't start at kickoff. Jansen Verdon tells us that the party begins pretty early around here. Cajun food, Zotico music, and family fun. It's more like a festival than college football game day. But as they say here at Nichols State University in Thibodeau, Louisiana, laissez le bon ton roule. In an effort to revamp the football pregame experience this year, the Nichols Athletics Department partnered with the Louisiana Swamp Stomp Festival Planning Committee to introduce the Swamp Stomp Tailgate Series, combining traditional tailgate elements with an extra dose of Cajun culture. You know, we wanted to make this South Louisiana, and so when folks come from all around the country, you know, like Stephen F. Austin is from Texas, and uh, numerous schools that are coming to play this year, we want them to feel the Cajun flair that is Thibodeau, Louisiana. In the style of Louisiana cultural events and festivals, the Swamp Stomp Tailgate Series, which begins three hours prior to kickoff and is free to all fans, offers a family-friendly environment with attractions for the kids, Cajun cuisine, and music for everyone to enjoy inside of John L. Guidry Stadium. We got the uh, Swamp Stomp bands out here that start at 3 o'clock. We got a bunch of old former uh, colonels out here, former football players. We get out here every, uh, every home game and we, uh, we fry some fresh fish and we cook some jambalaya. We even had some, uh, some hog crackling going this morning. And of course, we all, we all handing out. Everybody's giving around, you know, what they have. And uh, like I said, with the band being out here and 
You got the bounce house. It makes for a good atmosphere, a good Cajun atmosphere. The Swamp Storm Tailgate Series continues this Saturday starting at noon with a live performance by Cameron Dupuy and the Troubadours. For Colonel Football Weekly, I'm Jansen Verdick. Thank you very much, Jansen. We appreciate it. Back here with interim head coach Steve Axman. Coach, I know uh, you were brought along. This team was down. Your job was to make sure they weren't down and out. And so uh, uh, beside the festivities going on before the game, I know you, you got a cookout coming up for the guys here on Thursday night. Just another way to keep them involved, keep morale high, making sure these guys feel like, uh, you know, they own this program right now. You're bringing back some former players to kind of show them the way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're going to have that uh... – a little steak barbecue on, on Thursday, and I, I just think it's a nice time of the season for us to uh, uh, celebrate as a family. You know, the, the players are constantly bringing up the family, the family, and, and uh, so we're going to have a nice family outing Thursday, and uh, I'm sure they'll enjoy that tremendously. What do you think the message is going to be from the former players returning? Well, we're waiting here. You know, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I have, a, I have a, an idea, but uh, it'll be nice to have people that, you know, have, have played the game, uh, you know, with our colors and and uh, be able to just, you know, talk from experience about, you know, how wonderful it was to be here at Nichols and they're sharing their experiences as players. Yeah, a lot of guys uh, from that 05 uh, Southland mm -hmm. Conference championship team still right. very much involved. I know a few of those will be out there next week. We got to take a quick time out here on Colonel Football Weekly presented by the Sports Medicine Center at Thibodeau Regional back after this. Want to welcome you back to Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Mike Wagon, I'm alongside the interim head coach of the Colonel Football Program, Steve Axman. You got Lamar on the docket this Saturday, three o'clock kickoff for the Colonels and the Cardinals. Uh, I want to talk about the quarterback situation briefly. It fluctuated a few weeks ago due to an injury to Kalen Henderson. He came back pretty strong this past weekend, made some big plays with his arm. How do you feel about Kalen right now at the QB position? Because that's your specialty. Well, basically, you know, the, the, the injury factor has been uh, annoying and, and uh, has not helped us uh, at the quarterback position. Uh, you know, we've, we've gone through some trials and tribulations there where I've had to worry about more who's going to be the quarterback by game time than rather getting a good chance of, of really coaching them and getting the quality repetitions you need uh, to prepare and get ready for, for practices. Uh, but uh, Bo and Kalen both are tremendous young men. They... Uh, both uh, have a tremendous desire to succeed. They're hard workers, uh, both on a practice field and both in their studying, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, off the field. And uh, I really enjoy coaching both, but um, I wish they were both a little more healthy going into uh, these, you know, the final part of the season. Good thing is you, you, if you can get an effort from Michael Henry and Tobias Lofton and open up that run game like you did on Saturday, not going to be every week, but just, you know, uh, uh, with some consistency, that just opens up so many other things for you. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. When, when one aspect of your game um, starts to excel and, or, or get better and get very solid like it has, uh, you know, that, that's very helpful and it, and it helps to feed, 
you know, to, uh, to your passing game. But the thing is we've got to up our passing game. We've got to make it more balanced so that we can continue running the ball because if you don't throw the football, then people start sitting down on your run game, and we can't let that happen. Well, Colonel's falling to Stephen F. Austin this past Saturday. They host Lamar this weekend. Let's take a look at some other results from around the South and from last weekend. Sam Houston State pulled the upset over fifth-ranked McNeese State in Huntsville. Number nine, Southeastern Louisiana, ran for a single-game school record, 484 yards, and scored 27 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to pull away from Lamar in Beaumont. Northwestern State put up its biggest rushing total in a decade, 390 yards, in blowing out Incarnate Word in Natchitoches. Central Arkansas scored 10 touchdowns by nine players, rolling past Houston Baptist and Conway. The Bears are now 3-0 in league play. And in non-conference action, Abilene Christian was a winner at home against Ava Maria. we got to take one final timeout, come back with Coach Axman, and wrap it up on the other side here on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. In sports, you strive for first or best. The Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional is both the region's first comprehensive sports medicine program with a team of the best sports medicine trained experts. You're serious about the game. We're serious about your safety. With advanced concussion testing technology and certified athletic trainers, we're keeping athletes safely in the game. Play hard. Play to win. The Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional will help you play it safe. Donnie, I'm in Rouse's at least three times a week, and I want the best prices every day. Come on, Chef. Let's go shop. All right. There's got to be at least a thousand items just on this one aisle. At Rouse's, we stock more groceries than anyone else. I can see that. So what's with the tag? Best price every day. It's the Rouse's guarantee. You're getting our lowest price every day. So when I see this tag, you know you don't have to wait for a sale. I can shop any day. And get our best price every day. Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. Well, we're all about the people that we care for. At People's Health. We know that when it comes to health, what works is teamwork. Each People's Health Plan member has a team of talented professionals working together to coordinate care so our members can do what they love to do. That's what we do. We're here for you with People's Health. People's Health, your Medicare health team. Back here with you on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week. This week, it's Tessney Carruthers, the junior cross-country runner from British Columbia, finished in sixth place among 250 competitors in the Disney Cross-Country Classic back on Saturday. Mike Wagon, I'm alongside interim head coach Steve Axman. I understand there is a, a challenge brewing, coach. Hey, I just got to say that the players are pushing me to issue a... Uh, a uh, contest here of uh, you and I in a push-up contest. Now, I know I have more experience than you, and I have the age in my favor, but uh, we got to think about this. Fortunately, Thibodeau Regional Medical Center is right down the street. That's the good news. <laughs> we got to wrap things up here, Colonels and Cardinals in Thibodeau this Saturday, 3 o'clock. We'll talk to you here on this program coming up next week. Colonel Football Weekly has been presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, the official sports medicine provider of Nichols Athletics. This show has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. And People's Health, your Medicare health team. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.